you know, put an end to this topic once and for all, turn the Hubble round and show us um, Earth in real time, zooming in onto a, a place so that we can see what's happening at that place and, and we know that there is something up there looking down on us um, um, from space. But they will not do it. They can't do it. It, 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 can't, it doesn't exist. It literally doesn't exist. It's, it's all fraud. It's all fake. Um, pretty much everything NASA puts out is, is fraudulent. Um, nobody has actually um, really gone all the way across Antarctica. Yeah? Now, there are millionaires out there who, who could you know, assemble the resources to make an expedition and completely you know, go across and chart Antarctica and make a name for themselves, being the first person to do that. Yeah? But nobody ever does. Um, now, you can actually measure the temperature of the moonlight next to the, measure, the temperature of the uh, shade of the moonlight, and you'll find the moonlight is colder than the shade, the opposite from the sun. So the moon is throwing out its own light, and that light is the opposite from the sun. Now, that tells you that it's not reflecting the sun's light. Uh -huh. It's producing its own, and its light is different from the sun's. So, you know, the scientific community have not told us this, yeah, because they won't tell us this because um, it destroys this idea that the, the sun is, you know, is lighting up the moon. The other thing that's uh, about the spinning Earth is looking at the stars. Now, um, directly above the axis of spin is the pole star, Polaris, okay, um, directly over the North Pole. And um, we're told that the reason that all the stars spin around the, uh, the, the North Star is because the, the Earth is spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. Okay? Seems to make sense because if you put a long exposure camera uh, pointing at the North Star, you'll see um, the stars will make perfect circles around, perfect star trails. The only problem is the, um, the Earth is also orbiting the sun at 67,000 miles an hour. Okay? The sun is moving, dragging the earth and all the, all the planets up that way or that way um, at 600,000 miles an hour. So why do we see perfect circles? You know, because that's the slowest speed, <laughs> that's um, uh, slowest motion in that, in that mix. And, and yet, the, the Earth is moving 67 times faster that way and 600 times faster that way. So you should see the stars do all sorts of strange mo um, motions, but you don't. You only see them make these perfect circles. That tells me that it's the stars that are moving, not the Earth. And if a pilot is, uh, is flying around the curve of the Earth, then it sh he should be dipping the nose down um, every, every five minutes he should be dipping the nose down to, to stay around the curve. But the thing that really um, uh, got me interested was, as you say, the gyroscope. In, in a plane there is a, um, an artificial horizon, okay, and it's based on a gyroscope. And if you spin a gyroscope um, on a surface, it will want to stay upright. You can twist and tilt the surface as much as you like, the gyroscope will stay upright. So, if a plane has a gyroscope and it starts um, following the curve of the Earth, mm. the gyroscope would stay upright, which mm. means your, the uh, um, artificial horizon will start to, to roll backwards. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't. Mm -hmm. That's absolute proof that a plane flies over a flat surface rather than a curved one. Because um, I asked the pilot um, on my last flight, uh, you know, does, do you ever notice the, the, auto, um, the artificial horizon uh, rolling backwards? He said, no, no, but the artificial horizon has complex electronics in it to, to make sure it knows where it is on the Earth and it compensates. But I went to um, the manufacturer of the artificial horizon and they confirmed to me that it's completely mechanical, nothing electronic in it at whatsoever. So it's, it's literally just a gyroscope that can freely move. So that right there is proof to me that um, you know, planes fly over a plane. The problem is that we're taught as children um, you know, uh, this, this ball earth lie, 
And, um, you know, you might ask as a child, you know, um, what about the people in Australia? You know, they're standing on the bottom of the globe, won't they fall off? And your teacher says, no, no, gravity. And you go, oh, okay. And you never, never go back to that question. But when you go back to it as an adult and start looking at it with a critical eye, right, the whole thing falls apart. As you say, the, the globe is, is spinning at a thousand miles an hour. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's um, a leading astronomer in America, tells us that, that the Earth is not a perfect circle, it is actually an oblate spheroid, it's squashed mm -hmm. and, uh, and wider at the equator. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, um, znači, po, po stesnet je na polovite, a po širok je na ekvatorot. Exactly. Um, so my question to him would be, why is there land at the equator? Because um, water will move more readily than rock. So if the earth is spinning, the water will be um, collected at the equator. I mean, if you spin a wet um, tennis ball, okay, you spin a wet tennis ball, the water shoots off. Mm -hmm at the equator, essentially. So all the water will be um, gathered around the equator. So why is there land at the equator? Doesn't make any sense. The, it seems like Admiral Byrd found the edge of the dome, mm -hmm. okay, um, while he was out there. And as soon as he left there, they started firing missiles straight up, I believe, to try and test how far that, that dome went. If you watch the trajectory of the space shuttle, it doesn't go straight up, it always goes in a curve um, and out to sea, yeah? And if you see it... Why is that? Well, because it... That, is it normal to go straight up? Well, as fast as he can to go out of the, of well, the atmosphere? Well, um, I, you know, I, again, I'm, I've been talking to a few people um, in, in sort of the scientific community and they'll say, no, straight up isn't the right way to go. You have to sort of go sort of around the curve and, and, and get speed mm. to, to get into orbit. But still, the point is that they, they actually go horizontal. The space shuttle goes horizontal. It never goes any further up. It goes horizontal. Um, very, very low down in the, in the atmosphere um, because it, lets, it drops its um, external tank um, while it's still in the atmosphere. Um, so, you know, it's, it's still in the atmosphere while it's uh, horizontal, so it never gets any higher. And it goes out of sight, not because it goes too high, because it goes too far downrange. Um, and it seems that uh, nobody's ever on the space shuttle. And the proof of that is the Challenger disaster. Um, in, uh, I believe it's 1986, the Challenger exploded just after takeoff and killed seven astronauts. But it turns out that six of the astronauts are still alive. And uh, most of them are using their original names. Um, and you, you, know, uh, you can find pictures of them. They're, they're using the same names and they're, they're doing ordinary jobs now. Teachers. Teachers, lecturers, um, lawyers, whatever. But, um, but they're still alive. And, um, and you can see whenever the space shuttle lands, um, you can hear it. It's, it's a loud jet engine. Um, you watch any, any video of uh, the space shuttle landing, it, you can tell it's a jet engine. Uh, that's a, it's a jet-powered aircraft. That's it. It's not a glider. Um, in my video, I show you a glider how that seems, and then I'll show you the, the space shuttle, and yeah, it's not a glider, it's, it's an aircraft. Um, and that's what, they're fooling us, they're taking billions of dollars in and giving us images and, uh, and, and fake planes um, for that 10 billion, you know, how many, however many billions of dollars it is. That isn't the first thing that's been hidden over the years. I mean, we're all driving petrol cars because, because 100 years ago, the Rockefeller family uh, basically cornered the market on oil and the, um, the car industry was going electric. So, you know, all cars would have been electric from, from the get-go, but they basically forced um, everybody to use um, petrol cars and have hidden this secret. And, and literally, you know, we could be running around in electric cars that, that have um, unlimited mileage by now. But, uh, but we're still using these, these 
hundred year old um, machines, dirty machines, because of a, a secret that's been, been kept. It's, it's, it's easy. If everybody's been trained into believing that this is real, right, um, and, uh, and there's space, and uh, it's, it's uh, within our interest to, to explore space and uh, you know, go to the moon, go to Mars, yeah, people will pay for it. And, um, and they're making billions. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's, there's more to it, because I, um, I believe there's a, a big deception coming, and it's to do with aliens. Because now, um, since Roswell, uh, 1947, um, that was the first time anybody had ever understood the idea of aliens. But since then, we've been bombarded with, uh, with science fiction and the idea of aliens. And most people believe there are aliens out there. So they've prepared us for um, an alien invasion or, um, or an alien saviour. And I think the Flat Earth came came along at the right moment to educate people, to make people believe or, or, or understand that we've been lied to. And if you know, as I know in my heart now, that that is real and this isn't, I will not be fooled by aliens coming because there are no aliens. There's no space. Yeah? It's, it's all fantasy by, by Disney and NASA. Well, um, the Bible has a very, very clear view of what this, this, um, this place is. And it matches that place more than it matches this. Okay? And, and what it says is the great deep is under it. Just water. It's, it's just deep water. And above the firmament is water. And you know, it says in, in Genesis that uh, he separated the water below from the water above and made a space. <laughs> and then made dry land appear out of the water. So, um, what's under, under the, the flat earth? Well, it's water, and it just goes on. Um, again, I don't know for sure, because I've not been under there. I don't know what's, um, what's past the, uh, the outside of, or the, um, you know, the f first few hundred miles of, uh, of Antarctica. But um, everything I've, I've seen over the last year and a half um, tells me that that is true and this isn't. And I'm starting to believe and trust my intuition about this. Do you think it's true because uh, this world is very different from what most people think it is. Um, there are very powerful people who essentially rule this world right now. Um, and the ordinary person is a slave in this world. And slaves aren't educated. You know, they're taught what they need to, or, you know, they only need, they need to know, that's it. They're not, they're not taught truth, they're taught what they need to know. Um, and so you're, you're taught enough so that you can, you know, do the paperwork and operate the machinery, um, but you're not meant to know what's really going on, because that's what, that's the power they have over us. They know what's going on, what, you know, how how this world works, we don't, so they can control us. Um, in, my, in my opinion, the, the Big Bang theory and uh, the theory of evolution and the ball earth theory are all interlinked and they're all there to make us feel as though we're insignificant. We're small, small tiny, Miniature. unimportant uh, pieces of slime crawling around on a on a speck of dust in an infinite universe. If that's true, and there's no purpose, there's no meaning to anything, then the, our owners can do whatever they want with us. Then, you know, this is all accidental, so food can be genetically modified because it's imperfect. You know, we can be modified because we're imperfect. You know, um, if we realize that this is the universe, and we, complete universe. Yes, this system is the is complete everything. Un, is everything. Everything that NASA has put put out is CGI, is fake. Okay, um, you know people say. Uh, I think you mentioned it. Um, you know, if you look out in this, into the universe, you see that uh, the moon is round, you know, spherical, and the planets are spherical, and uh, so why are we flat? Well, um, 
how do you know that the planets and the, and the stars are spherical? You know, all you get is, if you look for a telescope, you see a flat disk. If you think you see a, um, a spherical shape there, well, it needs two eyes to, to, to resolve 3D. If you're looking for a telescope, you can't see anything in 3D. It's going to be flat anyway. So all you see is a flat blob of light. It's only NASA that's given you these beautiful pictures of, uh, of, of so-called planets and stars. Yeah? Um, so so it's, it's, it's a fallacy to say, well, everything else out there is, uh, is spherical, so we must be. You know? How, this is special. You know, so why, it's, it's like saying um, a basketball is round, so why isn't the court round? You know? um, it's, it's, it's a fallacy. So this, is, this uh, idea of a ball earth, theory of evolution, the Big Bang, is all about making us feel nothing so that we can be used. If everybody realised how special we all are, how unique every single life is, then this whole world would change overnight. We wouldn't allow ourselves to, to be used by this cabal. We wouldn't allow this planet to be destroyed. <laughs> because they're destroying it, because, oh, it's just an accidental planet, one of millions. We've found other Earths, you know. Eventually, if this one gets too messed up, we'll go to another one. No. <laughs> this, is, this is it. So if, if we all realise that, then we wouldn't allow all, this thing, all these things that are going on. It's all about um, control. There are a small group of people who want to control the world. And because there's so many of us out there, you know, they can't control us directly. They can't, you know, this small group of people can't, um, you know, come round to all of us and, and control us directly. So they must use our own minds, our own hearts and minds against ourselves. And this is what they've done. They've, they've educated us into this world, uh, into this globe spinning, you know, heliocentric Big Bang evolution world, uh, which makes us nothing. And as soon as we change that, this is, this is amazing because um, when I first started looking, it was about a year and a half ago, I looked on YouTube and there were maybe about 100 videos um, not even that, probably. Um, and nobody was talking about it. Right? And then over the last, over 2015, it exploded. There are uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of people looking at, uh, at Flat Earth now. And what happens is, is that you'll watch something or read something and it, something will strike a, a chord in your mind and you'll think, yeah, I, I've always wondered that. And what will happen is you will start feverishly researching. I mean, I, I, what happened to me was as soon as I, I got that, I, I spent every waking hour looking for things and testing things. And, um, and this seems to be replicated with, with thousands of people around the world who suddenly come into this they start you know, researching and, and getting a, a passion for this because this is what I think, it's the truth. And we recognise the truth when we hear it. And we, um, you know, we feel it. And, and this, this I, again, I believe, has come at the exact right time so that we, we awaken to what's going on in the world. Nothing else, you know, 9-11 even, hasn't awoken people. Right, that, to this extent, you know, for me, um, I've, I've been an atheist for 40 years. Um, from the age of 13, you know, I, I didn't want to, anything to, to do with God and Bibles and whatever and religions. Um, and now I know for a fact there is a creator. There are only two possibilities. Either there is a God or there isn't. And both of them are terrifying. Yeah. If there isn't a God, then nobody's in control. We're hurtling through space and, and there's no plan and there's no, there's no nothing. And, you know, that's terrifying. If there is a God, then we'd better find out who he is and what he wants and do exactly what he says. And it turns out that he gave us very specific instructions on how to live. Um, and they're not, they're not rules as in, you know, laws that you, you know, that 
um, you must do, follow uh, because, uh, you know, or put you in prison if you don't. No, these are, these are, are rules to live by, to, to make a harmonious world. You know, don't, don't harm anyone, don't kill anybody, don't steal from people, you know, don't covet people's items, you know. Don't lie. Don't lie. I mean, <laughs> these, these things are written in our hearts anyway, yeah? But we're in a society that, um, that legalises all of the Ten Commandments, you know. The policemen and soldiers can kill. They're allowed to kill, yeah? you know. Politicians even, can lie. They can lie. Um, they're lying all the time. Actually. They're lying all the time. Police have been told that they are allowed to lie to try and get um, to, to catch somebody. Yeah? They're allowed to lie. Um, everything in the Ten Commandments is legalised in this society. That tells you who runs this society. Yeah. So, so yeah, this, this, is, this is a profound movement. I don't like using the word movement, but it's a profound shift in consciousness for people because... Um, and like any other uh, topic that's, that's come out in the last few years, this one has made people realise that they've been lied to.